This Yummy. is creamy Mississippi Beefy Mac. There you go. You're totally not a oh, fan of. Oh, horrible. <laughs> Shut this video off. This is terrible. <laughs> Welcome back to our camper kitchen and today uh, Chris and Adam and I and Octavius are going to go back and check out two more of the missions down here on the Mission Trail in San, Anto and San, uh, in San Antonio and first off we need to get something ready for when we come back. Something good, something hearty, something tasty for us to do. So we were sitting there thinking about it this morning we're like, well we haven't done too much Mississippi stuff down here since we're in Texas. So we're going to do another Mississippi style dish and we didn't know what to do. if you see that going across the bottom of the screen that's my wife it's because you keep looking at me over there so i'm going to try and oh, stand behind gonna... the camera oh i was looking i was looking everywhere anywho we said let's do some mississippi stuff <laughs> and we wanted to try something different there's a couple different ideas that we have and one of them my beautiful wife come up with and she said how about a creamy mississippi beef mac beefy what? mac beefy mac creamy mississippi beefy mac if you say that five times fast you win. Hey, real quick. Yes. You're going to want to add some onion and garlic and salt and pepper to that. Yes. Because it's starting to get done. I smell it. Well, let's talk about that. What we need to do to make this creamy Mississippi beefy, creamy Mississippi beefy mac is you want to take two pounds of ground beef, which I have in our gym, which is known as our Instant pot multi cooker, yes. not a pressure cooker. Not a pressure cooker, but a slow cooker. Or right now it's going to be a fast cooker because I have this on saute function. And I just added two pounds of ground beef, a little bit of minced onion, a little bit of minced garlic. How much? I don't know. I'd say probably there's a teaspoon of onion, and here's about a teaspoon and a half of garlic because we really like the garlic. And salt. So in essence, what this is going to be, it's going to be kind of like a homemade hamburger helper. A little bit. Oh. And we're using the gem because we figured out the fancy... T oh my goodness. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. I did it for luck. Well, that's not going to bring you much luck in this oh. camper. Um, you're, we um, decided to do this in the instant pot gym because we have discovered the glorious delay start feature. And like we've told you before, it cooks a little um, less hot than our other slow cookers. So that gives us a little time. So if we know we're not going to be around. Don't we have a zing somewhere? Yes, it's in that cabinet. I, as I just pointed across the camera, I'm sorry. And that was my wife's beautiful finger. Look at that. It's kind of like hamburger helper with the hand. <laughs> <laughs> there you there go. She is. But we can we can brown this in this multi cooker. Then we can uh, set it to cook on low for four hours. Yes. But we can also have it delay start an hour, so that that actually gives us five hours to get back. Yep. See, so. this isn't one of those, like a, like the Mississippi beef roast, you want to cook it for like eight hours so it's all tender and juicy. This is ground beef, so it's already ground up. You don't have to worry about it being tender. But what we're doing is we're going to put these flavors together in the hamburger, and so it's going to give it a whole lot of good flavor. If you see my camera jiggle, it's because my wife's turning the screen. I'm sorry. We're so well prepared today for this. Today has been a, a doozy of a day. We had to get some cushies for our tushies. Yeah, the, the seats that were on the bikes we were using. Well, I've got a delicate hiney. <laughs> and that seat just wasn't cutting it. Actually, it kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, we're going to later start, which is okay because it's been a little chillier here than it was supposed to be. So... It's going to be, we're going during the warmest part of the day. Which is 60, which is, yeah. eh, but we're going to be on bikes, so we'll be yeah. warm. And I'll, of course, I'm going to have a dog strapped on my back, so I'll have some back heat. Yeah, so we just wanted to get one last hurrah in before we leave San Antonio um, and head to Austin. Mm -hmm. So we are... And if this is Austin, I still love you. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. So we thought we get we really really enjoyed our last bike ride. Yes. Um. So we are very excited to go do that again. Um, that was but, one of our favorite parts of the trip so far. I think. Yes. And I think though we really really were hungry when we got back. So we know we need to have something ready and awaiting. 
and that's one of the things we used to be uh, used to on vacation go out to eat a lot but I am really loving our camper kitchen because I don't have to wait for someone to cook something especially if we've prepped ahead we can come home and eat and that is like really That's the best part that really helps with the mood of everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've noticed especially since we gone we've mm -hmm. gone to low carb and because we're transparent here I haven't been that low carb in Texas <laughs> I've been eating everything around Texas, which has been great, but still um, trying to be good about it. But when it's time to eat, it's time to eat around here. Yeah. And so we we are really good about packing snacks and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But it is really, really awesome to be able to come back and have warm food awaiting for us. And so yes. that's why we decided we're going to try some creamy Mississippi Beefy Mac. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the brown feature off yeah, of just, here. Hit yeah, cancel. Yeah. Now, my meat is not completely browned up yet. It's okay. It's going to cook for another four hours, and it's yeah. browned up enough. I'm just trying to get all the fat rendered down out of it and try to get everything even, you know, so yes. that everything disperses evenly. So, I don't know, like maybe some ranch packet. Yes. And again, we're using one of our favorite flavors, the dill ranch. Yes. Um, it has less carbs. You can use traditional uh ranch if you like we kind of just like uh rotating the different kinds of flavors mm -hmm. of the ranch packets because we eat mississippi stuff a lot a lot of stuff i got a dear friend that lives in mississippi she said you come on down i'm like i can have mississippi anywhere <laughs> but we'll stuck with you yeah all right and then one packet of au jus gravy mm -hmm. right over the top i can tell you already it smells super good in here and then I'm going to do six pepperoncinis. Mm -hmm. Grab myself a, a grabber, also known as a fork. One pepperoncini. Two pepperoncinis. Three. Four. Oh, these are big. Mm -hmm. Five. Here's a little one to make up for the big ones. And then a gargantuan. Because I like them big. And pour the rest of that juice in there. Yeah. It's about a half cup. About a quarter cup there. Okay. But that's okay. If it's a half cup, that's fine too. Yeah. Depends on how much pepperoncini you like in there. Mm -hmm. It's going to add some sour to it, a little vinegar, maybe just a touch of heat, but not a lot, so don't freak out. And then my butter, I could just throw that stick in there. Actually, I'm going to use this knife over here. Um, I could throw the butter in, but what I'm going to do is mix this up. That way everything's already mixed up and stirred together. And then pretty much what you're doing is you're just letting that meat cook for the next four hours on low. But more so, you're letting all those flavors marry up and merge together and make every bite of this taste the same. And by same, I mean really good. One little pat, two little pats. And when we get back, we're going to add a brick of cream cheese and the mm -hmm. macaroni. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought you were going to... Break into dance just then. The macaroni. Hey, macaroni. I. What, is that what you were hoping <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah, okay. that's what I was okay. thinking. Yeah. I'm sorry if y'all weren't hoping for that. <laughs> so I've got the ingredients for now in there. Stir my butter in. Get all those flavors mixed together. Get all that powder mixed up into the juices of the hamburger. Plus the juices of the pepperoncini. Can you smell that over there? Mm-hmm. Are you as excited as I am? I am. Them? I'm also really excited to show them the magic that is how you can delay your cooking just enough to like make it really work for I'll you. I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of excited about it too because I don't know how. <laughs> I haven't done the delay feature on this yet, so I guess we're about to find out yep. just how well I can learn a new trick. <laughs> Speaking of old dogs, my old dog is excited about going today. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you that here in a little bit, just how excited he is. But before we do that, we've got everything stirred up good enough in there. Get them pepperoncinis all divvied out amongst the hamburger, just like that. And now, oh, that's going to be good. I almost threw that away. <laughs> Don't throw it away. And I oh, hope yeah. that there wasn't any raw hamburger on that, dear. It's no, I only mixed in from the clean or the cook side. Yeah. I'm going to wash my mouth out now. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do. <laughs> the lid's behind you. Is take the lid that is behind me and put it in front of me and on top. Ooh, that's got some heat to it. Oh, look at the steam right there. Oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> and now what do you want me okay, to do? Okay, first you're going to hit slow cook low button. 
I'll find it. it okay. I'll find it. Let's look at glow. Okay, now turn it up to four hours. Okay, now hit the delay start button and take that down. No, you're hitting the temp button. Down to an hour. There you go. So in an hour, it will turn back on and cook on low for four hours. And we also have our warmer on, which... Hear that beep? That just said, okay. You've done what you're supposed to yes. do. Now, I will tell you, we either accidentally hit it off or it didn't automatically turn on the first time. I'm so not sure, sure which. That warmer, we've had that warmer not turn on when we thought it was going to before. Yes. So you guys got to watch that. Make sure that light is a glowing. Yes. Make sure the keep warm is on or it won't keep warm. It will just cool off. Yes. Speaking of cool off, I think it is time for you and me and the kid and the dog to go outside in this nice cool day and take a bike ride. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's Here go. Here we go. What are you doing, Puddy? Changing out the seats on the bike so that you have more cushy for your tushy. <laughs> hey, Aki. You want to go? Huh? You want to go? You want to go? You want to go? Oh, I think Aki wants to go. Hi. He's even more excited than we are to go on this trip. Hello, San Juan. So, Chris took Addy inside real quick to use the restroom before we go on our bike ride, so we're going to do the same thing with Aki. Come on. Let the dog have his privacy. We good? No, now he's just sniffing sticks. is an irrigation ditch that was built back in the people of the day that lived in these missions. And that's how they controlled the water flow in order to maintain their crops, to water their crops. And it's really interesting to see some of the stuff that was, that was uh, grown here, like sugarcane, beans, corn, squash, chilies, tobacco, sweet potatoes, uh, wild onions, mushrooms, grapes berries um, that were all controlled by the irrigation ditches. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like it's this is where they house some kind of animals, but I like the way they do their fencing. It's pretty cool. So this right here, these double walls, this is the old Indian quarters. This is where the native people who lived at the mission, this is where they actually lived. 15 feet wide, and this is about, what, 70, 80 feet long. And then there's another one on the other side, too, is where all the natives lived. This building right here was the convent. And, of course, up there you see the church, which is still in effect today. They still actually hold services there at the church. And then beyond there is the rectory. And that's where the priests still live today. We can't go in there. And if you look over here to my right, right here was an unfinished church. They spent 10 years working on this and building it, but the Indian workers that lived here dwindled down. And by the end of the 1700s, they gave up on building this huge church that was supposed to be bigger than this one. So this is a burying ground where they buried the Indians that lived here. Around 1780, the remains of the indigenous people and other local inhabitants were interred in this church that was never completed. This church also served as a burial ground for those that lived and died here.
built back in the 1700s and they're still using it today. Okay, so this is like the third time I have taped this because I'm working with a different camera and I didn't realize that it wasn't recording a moment ago. <laughs> so all the people around here hear me talking to myself or see me talking to myself and they must think I have a lot to say. It's just that I don't know how to operate the camera. Anywho, it's a lot cooler today than we thought it was going to be. At one point, it was supposed to be almost 70 today, and I think it's barely 60. So it's a little chilly out, but we're going to make the best of it. We think once we get out biking, it's going to feel a lot warmer because our blood will be a pumping. But we are at one of the missions today, and we're just going to go back and forth between two missions. We know a lot of people always say that they like park at one mission and they go to all four. That's kind of everything I read online. We attempted that the last time and we did not accomplish it. We only made it between two and it made a full day for us. So we decided to go and park at a different mission this time and go between it and another one that we haven't been to yet. And decided that maybe that's more our pace than what a lot of people can do. We're not normally bike riders outside of um, outside of this trip, so we're building up our endurance. We're enjoying it. We absolutely love it. Um, but um, we definitely, I don't think we could have handled doing all four missions on one trip. Um, well, I definitely know we couldn't. So we are at Mission San Juan. Um, right now and we Addie and I are currently warming up in the truck waiting on daddy as he explores the mission and I'm sure you're going to see all kinds of footage of that um, and then we're going to head out on a bike ride and um, have adventures that way and Mr. Octavius is with us today he is very excited so um, pretty soon we're going to take this show on the bike trail there he is are you waiting on daddy are you ready to go so we're getting ready to try this mission trail again as soon as Chris figures out how to get on the bike trail. We're at Mission San Juan right now. We're getting ready to go over to Mission Espada. She's pointing that way, so we're going that way. Spot at 1.5 miles. Pretty up there, slow poke. Here comes some more uphill, yay. It would help if I could figure out the shift on this bike. <laughs> Can you hear me huffing and puffing? That's for real, Joe. I'm out of shape. Okay, so we are making a quick stop at Mission Espada. We are fighting the time to make sure that we get back where we parked our car before everything starts to close down. So we're gonna do a real quick tour. Here we go. I'm waiting on the fan. We just had to cross a kind of a busy um, bridge. And here they are. Hi, Aki! <laughs> Get on up there, Addy. This has really been one of our favorite parts of this trip, is getting to ride on these bike trails. <sighs> Another bike ride in the books. You're foggy. A little bit. Fix that. We'll be all right. My biggest fear. <sighs> what you think? I need to take this off. Yeah, we we put it's on like. It's not cold outside no more. Yeah, we put on like double layers, and I got a t-shirt on under two sweatshirts because when you just stand out there, 50 degrees can get a little cold down here in Texas. Mm -hmm. But when you start bike riding, it doesn't take long to get warm at all. But much shorter ride today altogether was about 
two and a half, maybe three miles, oh, somewhere in there. Yeah. But um, we got to see the other two missions that we wanted to see, Mission San Juan and Mission Espada. Mm -hmm. Mission San Juan was a, um, a bustling place for trade and things like that. And then Mission Espada was the last of all the missions that were built. Neat how each one of the missions is different as far as how they're built. Um, but then how they're kind of the same on how, you know, they, the, they brought the monks in to bring in the people from around the area and convert them to Catholicism and to Spanish culture and to see over the last almost 300 years how that community has grown. I mean, you can see it in the ethnicity in the area, um, the Spanish heritage, the Mexican heritage, the, the American heritage that's here. Um, but just, it's really cool. Um that something has lasted almost 300 years. In fact, the Alamo turns 300 next year. So happy birthday, Alamo, next year. Maybe we'll come back with a birthday cake. <laughs> and I think um, the Riverwalk Trail that connects everything is by far probably our favorite thing on the entire whole big oh month long gosh, trip yeah. we've taken. Um, it is just so much fun to just get out there as a family. We can bring Octavius. And there's all kinds of nature, and it's just peaceful, and you can kind of go at your own pace. It's it's, it's well kept and beautiful. Everything's yeah. beautiful, and even I mean the days that we've been out have been kind of cool and cloudy. I can't imagine how beautiful it is on a sunny day. Oh man! Now in the middle of like Texas heat, I bet that's. That there's not a whole lot of shade. I bet there's people more <laughs> closer to the river and in the river than just by it. You need to bring a lot of water. But yeah. this time of year is perfect to kind of just stroll around. And we, I mean, it's been our favorite days on the trip, in Absolutely. my opinion. Yeah. I just, I mean, city life is neat, you know, and I loved going out to the open mics. And I don't mind the city life as long as I can leave it when I want to. But to come out here where it's more wide open and there's more to do and it's not peak season so there's a lot less people here yeah um it's it's great now i can imagine on a nice beautiful spring day when everything's starting to bud how gorgeous it is down here but even in you know now when it's getting cold and down here fall lasts a lot longer than it does back home so there's still leaves on trees and some of the leaves are just now turning it's still beautiful down here there's a family over there playing with their kids folks just playing out there in the courtyard now imagine that about 300 years ago <laughs> doing the same thing but i think it's time to go back to the cow yes. and check on our creamy beefy mac no creamy mississippi beefy mac there you go there we go <laughs> i might not get it right but i'll eat it right away <laughs> we're still foggy i think it's because it's been out in the cold this whole time yeah i'm gonna fix that Okay. Well, we are back from our adventures and a trip to the laundromat. Yes. I got all our laundry from over the week done, all except for a couple shirts I just saw I forgot to put in it. But we'll get to that later. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> but we had a good time. You should get, Mikey needs to get major kudos. He has been our laundry dude the entire trip. He makes sure we have clean clothes. You know why? Because Chris packed Mikey less clothes than everyone mm -hmm. else so that he would run out before yeah. <laughs> the IT That's okay. <laughs> it means I don't have to do the dishes <laughs> oh, as much. That is true. I do do <laughs> the dishes while you're gone. <laughs> we had a good time on our trip uh, seeing Mission Espada and Mission San Juan. Really neat checking all that out. But we are hungry. Yes. And my poor girls sat in here and smelled this while I was going and getting the laundry done. So... Uh, I'm going to reward them by finishing this, and I'll reward you as well for waiting on this. So let's check it out. Really should do something where we have another camera set up, because y'all got to see this. I'm going to carefully uh, careful, show it hot. to you. But look at that. Yes. It's just meat and peppers, but really good meat and really good peppers. I snuck up a small bite when it wasn't quite done. Uh, I know. But hey, it's my house, or camper anyway and it smells really good in here. Now, y'all know that we're doing the whole low carb thing, trying to, Chris is doing really good on the low carb. You want to add your cream cheese before you start talking about that because it needs to melt. Okay. okay. But one of the things that we're going to add to this is macaroni, or elbows anyway, pa elbow pasta, elbow pasta. It's not macaroni. It's kind of macaroni. I mean, it's, it's beef mac, 
but before we do all that, one thing I got to do is add my brick of cream cheese that my beautiful wife already cut up for me and cubed up. She's a nice lady. She was a hungry lady, so she's she, skipping the she steps. Wants, she wants her husband to get this done, so we'll take that and we'll mix it in. Again, this is to make it creamy. Now, I'm not doing it, but one thing I do recommend after many, 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 many recipes, recipe, I feel like I got the hiccups, many recipes using the peppers is one thing I should have did is I should have plucked the stems off the peppers before I put them in because I get so excited to eat this stuff and I wolf it down that I end up chomping on some stems and they don't hurt nothing, but they're just, Most you know, people don't eat stemmy. the peppers though, could. Oh, you're, what's you're... wrong with y'all? <laughs> Some people do, but most people don't. So, if you're going to, he likes to take the stems off. Mm -hmm. But you were going to tell him about our pasta, weren't you? Yeah, the pasta that we use, because they're like, hey, or, well, I, th I think you're doing I don't know, I assume. I'm sorry, if you're not doing that, my apologies. But if you're going, hey, I thought y'all ate low carb. What's this whole we're going to eat macaroni kind of thing? Well, when we eat pasta, it's not that often. But when we do, it's kind of like a treat for us. We eat a very low carb, very high fiber pasta that doesn't taste like high fiber pasta, if you know what I mean. It doesn't taste like boiled cardboard. It actually really tastes like pasta. And there's a couple reasons <laughs> why we only eat this a couple times a month. One is because it's kind of expensive. I don't know how much these are a bag, but it's not like going and buying a, a couple dollars worth it's of not, pasta. Well, it's not easy to get either because no. you have to order it from a special site and it comes in very small portions, which is fine because we don't eat a whole lot of it. Right. But so we just like make an order every few months and order, um, I order uh, macaroni and I order a fettuccine mm -hmm. and then I will also order some of their bread because Addie likes to have toast occasionally or should we make a really good grilled cheese with their bread yep. which is really good and it's low carb if you're counting net carbs right um, and so we only make an order every so often and then we only use it every so often yeah they say this when we say low carb when you look at the total amount of carbs in it it's 25 grams of carbs which if you're eating low carb, you go, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. But then when you start doing the subtraction, because you got to cut out the fiber that are the carbohydrates, there's 18 grams of fiber per serving, which is two ounces. There's four servings in this. And, so and that's this a dish, lot of fiber. This dish will actually make about six total servings, so you're even eating less than that. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we treat ourselves to it a couple times a month, kind of like if you're going to go out to dinner, but we're showing you in an expensive way instead of going to one of these places around here in San Antonio and spending 50, 60, 70 dollars for a family of three. Mm -hmm. um, we got this done for around 10 bucks. I don't know, I'm not counting this. I'll have to see. Much yeah, but if you are eating low carb, you could eat this and, and use, you know, the dollar amount. I'm gonna feel good about myself because we pinched some pennies and, you know, <laughs> we're saving some, we're yeah. saving some room for later, if you know what I mean. But my cream cheese has all melted down and that looks really, really good. And now I will take my pasta that has been cooked a little under al dente because it's going to continue to cook and then it's going to sit in this. And he and drained it already. Yes, I drained it. So it's ready to go in the pot. Oh, careful. You keep oh. hitting yourself. Well, it's... Bull. China shop. <laughs> I'll mix all my pasta in. I'm telling you right now, hamburger helper ain't got nothing on this just from what it looks like. <laughs> it does. It looks like hamburger helper. But I, I bet, bet it tastes better. It does taste a lot better. So let me grab a I'll grab a plate for presentation purposes. Oh, oh the 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 professional yeah, uh, paper yeah. plate for presentation. <laughs> So I, I think it's for portion purposes. I think it is. <laughs> and she said we'll get six servings. I don't know who she's serving. Because <laughs> I'm hungry. And we went on a long bike ride. Yes. Not quite as long as the other day. Oh my goodness, Michael. <laughs> it's for presentation purposes. Oh. <laughs> and here's my pasta fork. Check her out. Can y'all see that? Can you see that in the... Uh, we'll, we'll have a photo too. I'll come to you. <laughs> okay. 
as the whole trailer. Did you miss me? <laughs> this Yummy. is creamy Mississippi beefy mac. There you go. Of course, I eat the peppers, so let's try this out. Let's see if he likes it. This is an experiment, so there's he a good possibility like you might not see this video <laughs> if it's not any good. I don't think I don't think that's the case. <laughs> That's good. Mm. Cut mm. your head off here. <laughs> I don't know what else to could say. You, could you finish the video so the rest of us can eat? I want to finish my plate. <laughs> no. You got the Mississippi flavors. Which you're totally not a oh. fan of. Oh, horrible. Shut <laughs> this video off. This is terrible. <laughs> So the Mississippi flavors, and then with the cream cheese again, that we're we're big proponents now of the of the creamy Mississippi anything, and you put the macaroni in there with it. This is like, uh, it's like hamburger helper on steroids. It, there's a spicy bite to it from the peppers and the juice. Not anything that's going to burn your face off, but just something that goes, ooh, this has a slight kick to it. It's salty enough because the two packets, and I did add some salt to the beef, but it's perfect. You got those peppers or the. The peppers in there, of course, and you got the onions and the garlic that give that beef even more flavor. This is absolutely a treat. Your kids will absolutely love this. My kid is gonna go nuts over this if I even let her have any. She's she's standing back there like saying, "Hurry up, Dad. <laughs> Shut up, old man! It's time to eat." <laughs> so, this is good stuff. This deserves one of these. So, if you would down below, click the thing that looks like this. <laughs> And also, if you haven't become a member of the Croc Posse, we invite you to do so. All you got to do is click subscribe and welcome to the proud, loving family that we know as the Croc Posse. And if y'all keep watching, we'll keep cooking. And all will be well. Bye, y'all. We have to turn this on so they can, la, hear, la, la. You. They can hear you being rude to me. I wasn't being rude. That's on, so you'll burn your butt and I'll laugh at you. Uh -huh. being rude. Ah. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. That's really loud. Is what I was trying to. Not as loud as you are. Quiet 